Welcome back everyone to a new VR tutorial. So in the previous episode, we learned about continuous movement and in this video, we learned how to set up teleportation for VR in Unity. You know the deal by now, you can support this channel and get the source code on my Patreon. So you guys have been already a lot to join me lately and I can express how much it means to have you guys watching my video, commenting and help me make this series. And as always, a big shout out to Unity for partnering with me on this tutorial. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so for our teleportation system, if you don't know it, this system works by pointing a position using a ray and after pressing a button, you are teleported to the selected location. So the first thing we are going to need to make a teleportation work is a ray. To do this, let's go to our XR origin, right click on the camera offset and go to XR ray interaction action based. Now we can rename it a right teleportation ray. As you can see, this has created a new child of the camera offset that has a XR controller component to make this game object follow the position of our controller and use its action. But most importantly, we have here the XR ray interactor component that will allow us to interact in our scene using a ray. And that will use here the line renderer and the XR interactor line visual component for its visual. Even more, some of you might have noticed that adding a XR ray interactor has also added this XR interaction manager in our scene. This is a component to handle the interaction of an object and that we will see more in details in the future episodes, so let's keep going. So as we did in the first episode, to set the XR controller on the right and left hand, we can select the right ray and go at the top right corner of the XR controller, click on the preset icon and choose the XRI default right controller to autofill all of its action. Now we could stop right here but if you want the player to also teleport using the left hand we can simply select the right teleportation ray, press ctrl d to duplicate it, rename it left teleportation ray and finally change the preset to xri default left controller. Now let's click on play to try this. As you can see it works, we can see a red ray coming out of both hands. But when I press on any input, it does nothing, so let's see how we can use it to teleport. First, we are going to need a teleportation provider. Let's select the XR origin and add the teleportation provider component. As the other movement, it needs a reference to the locomotion system component, so let's drag it over there. Finally, the last thing we need is to say where we can teleport. So with the Unity XR toolkit, we have two types of teleportation zone, the teleportation area and the teleportation anchor. So let me show you an example with both. I'm going to select our plane and add a teleportation area component. We can drag here in this list the collider that will be used, which is the mesh collider of the plane in my case. And if we click on play, it works. Now we have turned our whole plane into a teleportation area and I can point a direction and it teleports me after pressing the grip button. Perfect. But right now, I noticed something a bit annoying. The input used to teleport is in fact the grip button. So if we leave play mode, we can see that it is because the ray interactor used here the select action of the XR controller to validate the teleportation. So you can leave it like this, but in my case, I prefer to use the trigger button to teleport. So I'm going to search for the activate action of the right controller for the right ray. And once again, we can do this on both hands and set the activate action as well for the left ray so that the teleportation will use the trigger button. Now for the other teleportation destination, I'm going to create a new plane and put it on the side like this. Next, create an empty game object, rename it teleportation anchor, right click on it, 3D object, cylinder. This will create a cylinder as a child of this empty game object. And I think I'm going to change the material of this cylinder to something a bit better. So let's right click in the project windows, create material, call it teleportation anchor material. I'm going to change its shader to universal rendering pipeline unlit and give it a blue tint. We can drag it on the cylinder to assign it as a new material. And so next to make this material transparent, we can change the surface type to transparent select the color and reduce the alpha value. Next, we need to set the position of the cylinder to 0, 1, 0. This way, when we select the parent, 
The position of the parent, as you can see, starts at the bottom of the cylinder. And finally, we can move the teleportation anchor somewhere on our plane and add a teleportation anchor component to it. Perfect. Now, this is a bit the same as for the teleportation area. We can drag the collider of the cylinder in the collider list over there. And as you can see, the other important parameter here is the teleport anchor transform. This will be used to set the position that will be used after teleporting. So in this case, we can teleport at the same position. So let's drag there the teleportation anchor game object. And just like that, we have a teleportation anchor ready to be used and that will be able to point and which will teleport us directly over there at this exact position. Oh, and by the way, you can now use it all over your project. So we can simply duplicate it and move it around to create another teleportation anchor. So let's click on play to try this. There you go, guys. As you can see, we have the difference between the teleportation area here, whereas I can teleport everywhere on the teleportation area. When I point the cylinder of the teleportation anchor, I get teleported always at the same exact location, which is super useful if you want your player to move to a predefined position. And by the way, you can see that the position is always the same, but not the rotation. So if you want to change the player direction after teleporting, it's also possible. So let me show you. We can leave play mode, select one of the teleportation anchor, and here in the match orientation, change it from world space up to target up and forward. This will use here the blue axis of the anchor for the new direction of the player, as well as keep the green axis for the up axis of the player. And now if I click on play again, as you can see, I get teleported every time to the same direction like we wanted. Perfect. Now we already managed to create a solid teleportation system for our player. So congratulations. But we can go a bit further by improving the look of our ray. And so I'm going to share with you some technique to make it look more beautiful. The first thing I want to do with this teleportation is make the ray curved. This will allow us to more easily point a direction on the ground. So for this, let's go to one of our ray interactor and change the line type to Bezier curve. Now, if I click on play, as you can see, we have now a curved ray pointing at the ground. And this ray is actually controlled by three points that we can have a look at in the scene view. We can update the position of this three point here in the raycast configuration. And in my case, I'm going to set it to five minus seven, three minus zero dot three. But as we are in play mode, if we leave now, it will not keep these values. So let's copy them, leave play mode, and then pad them again. We can also pad them on the other ray interactor. Perfect. Next step, let's add a reticle that will be placed at the end of the ray to better display the pointed position. We can select the right ray, right click, go to 3D object, cylinder. We can rename it reticle. Let's press R and scale down the cylinders to something a bit smaller and then scale it on the Y axis. Next, and it's really important, remove the collider on the reticle. And I'm going to also change its material with the teleportation anchor material we made earlier. Perfect. Now what's left is to drag this reticle game object in the reticle parameter of the XR interactor line visual. As you can see, there are also other settings in this component to change the width and the color of the ray. But in my case, I will leave it like this. Now to also add a reticle on the other end, we can select it, duplicate it with Ctrl D, drag it under the other ray and simply reference this new reticle on the XR interactor line visual. And now let's click on play to try what we made. And there you go, guys. As you can see now, we can see this reticle at the end of our curved ray. And I think it really adds a nice touch. So feel free to experiment with all of the visual settings to change the look of the ray to what you want. Another great example of changing the visual is shown in the last tutorial series I made, where I use custom shader to tweak the look of the teleportation. I will leave this video in the description if you want to learn more about how I did it. 
But here you go, congratulations if you managed to follow till this point. We now have a solid teleportation system that even works with the continuous locomotion system from last episode. I hope you enjoyed once again this tutorial and if you did, you know what to do. Like, subscribe and don't forget to grab the source code as well as exclusive content on my Patreon. Your support is what is making me able to do these videos. See you next week and bye bye.